Good morning. Hello, hello. Oh, what happened to my live? Did it just start over? Oh, that is so odd. Okay. I think YouTube just reset my live. And I hope I'm live still. Okay, that was weird. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to go with it and I'm going to hope that <laughs> Mercury retrograde is not messing with me and that I am actually still live. So hello. Oh, good. Okay. There's people in the comments talking. So I know I'm really here. <laughs> I'm not hallucinating. Hi, Dreamcatcher. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sarah. I, I, I knew I hit the live thing and then I looked away and it, it said a certain amount of seconds. And then I looked away, did something and looked back and then it completely reset. And it, made me think that it went off and I don't know. Anyway, never mind. Okay. Thank you, Priscilla. Hello. Welcome. Uh, Sarah. Oh no, no, I got it. I got it. You're good. Don't worry. I can't believe you're here. That's so funny, Sarah. We'll be talking later. I, yeah, I did. I, you know what? Maybe I didn't respond to you, but I got it. Don't worry. We're good. So, um, okay. So I think I'm on a roll with live streams. Uh, Brianna, hello from this lone wolf. Uh, and so, I think you, I don't know if you have Chiron and Aries, but you might enjoy this little conversation. And I have to say, it is actually inspired from, uh, so, you know, last night I was, I couldn't sleep and I was scrolling on my Instagram and I just randomly clicked on something from, so, uh, uh, you may know Nadia Shaw, her channel here on YouTube. She's a wonderful astrologer. She brings a lot of astrologers together. Um, and, and, shows you all sorts of amazing information, but I clicked on a reel that she had that Michael Luton, who is a legendary astrologer, uh, was talking to her about. Uh, it was, it actually wasn't about Chiron and Aries. It was actually about Pluto conjunctions, but what I listened to was about Chiron and Aries and it grabbed my attention because it made me realize, it finally made me realize just how relevant and personal and impossible to ignore my Chiron energy is natally and also the fact that it is stimulated right now. I'm having what is called a Chiron return and our recent April 8th eclipse very much opened the door to this for me because for all of you, the recent solar eclipse that occurred on April 8th was exactly conjunct Chiron at around 19 degrees of Aries. So this Chiron and Aries conversation is not going to be super important for everyone. I want you to understand that it is most relevant if you have Chiron and Aries, first of all, and even more so if you have Chiron and Aries conjunct one of your planets in your birth chart or an angle. If you have it conjunct one of your personal planets or an angle, it is a very dominant energy. And I happen to have Chiron conjunct my ascendant in Aries in my birth chart. And so, uh, it is, so Brianna saying, yes, Chiron and the sun in Aries are conjunct and you are also going through your Chiron return. Okay. So this is definitely a video for you, girlfriends. All right. So, um, and thank you, Brianna is asking you all to click the like button for me. And I definitely appreciate that. Sometimes I forget to ask, but it actually makes a difference. It helps YouTube's algorithm share the, uh, this video and my astrology content more. For some reason, the more you like, the more you comment or share, it, it just shares the videos more that way. And yours is in the fourth house, Brianna. Okay. So your lone wolf wound is very family oriented then. So how do I, I want to try to be thorough because I don't often talk about Chiron and, uh, and this was really just, I, I had a wow aha moment from the wisdom of Michael Luton. So thank you, Michael. I adore you. I think you're an amazing man and astrologer and you actually really brought something to my attention about my life path and about what I am currently going through and how it's being stimulated by my Chiron return. So Chiron is an asteroid that you will find in your birth chart, your Chiron sign placement, the house placement. It indicates an area of your life where you have this permanent wound because Chiron was known as the wounded healer. He was uh, forced to go through life with this wound that never healed, and he spent 
his life trying to heal others and help others, despite carrying this burden of this wound in his own physical body. And so your Chiron placement in your birth chart symbolizes this wound that you have. Now we all have wounds. The Chironic wound has this special consideration because it's almost like a shamanic wound where you're meant to embrace the wound and use it, use your wound to heal others. And then you transform that uh, transmute. Maybe that's the better word. You, you never heal the wound, but you actually, the wound serves a purpose because it allows you to be a healer when you learn how to work with this wound. Okay. So not everybody's Chiron placement is going to be very important. Again, I am very picky about asteroids and, and fixed stars and placements like, like Chiron. So if you just have Chiron hanging out in a house in your chart, I really don't think it's a big deal. I just don't. I'm not a big Chiron person in general, but if it's angular and if it is conjunct a personal planet or it not ends, if it is angular or conjunct a personal planet within three to five degrees, the most, I would say more three, I'd be stingy. It's a real big part of your life. And I do have Chiron within two degrees, two and a half degrees of my ascendant. And it is almost exactly opposite Uranus in my birth chart. Uranus is on my descendant. So Chiron on the ascendant in the birth chart actually is a very big symbol of having the mark of being a healer in this lifetime. And when I call myself a healer, I, I don't mean it in any other way than I have a life path. I am meant to do what I can in this lifetime to help heal others in some way. And the way that I'm helping people heal has a lot to do with Aries qualities. I heal you by working through my own identity wound. And I help you, the goal is to help all of you embrace your own authenticity, your own identity, your own courage, all of those Aries qualities, right? And so Chiron has this orbit where it takes 51, 50, it's like 50.8, I think, years. So almost 51 years to make a complete revolution and go through all of the signs. And when you are about 50 years old, 50 to 51 years old, you will all experience what's known as a Chiron return, where Chiron in the sky returns to its placement in your birth chart. And I am going through this now. I'm going to have my first exact hit. I think it's May 24th. So Chiron is getting there. And in my case, I will have the Chiron return this year. And then next year, I will have transiting Chiron conjunct my ascendant. So it's going to mimic my natal birth chart. So the next couple of years, Chiron is pretty strong in my birth chart. It will be Chiron return, Chiron conjunct the ascendant, and then simultaneously opposite Uranus in my birth chart. And I, I have speculated on what I think this means more next year, but what it means right now is something a bit different. And Michael Luton really helped me uh, see this and, and consider this. And so let me go back to childhood. And maybe if you have Chiron and Aries, you will relate to this. So from when I was a young child, I have always felt alone. Now, there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. And when I was really young, I, I think I did have more times in my life where I felt so alone and lonely, but I've always enjoyed my own company. So that achy feeling of being lonely was never too terrible for me personally. I have 12th house energy. I really like being alone. I really like my own company. So while I don't qualify myself as feeling lonely, I definitely say would say I'm a lone wolf. And I am alone. I feel alone in this world more often than not. And it connects to the Chiron and Aries wounds of in this lifetime, I am meant to do things by myself. I am meant to do things on my own. I am meant to have a life path where there isn't a lot of 
assistance and uh, connections with other people because that is part of this wound that I'm dealing with in this lifetime. And it's right there on my ascendant, which kind of amplifies that opposing Uranus in the seventh house, which again, it kind of amplifies that. So I heard Michael Luton talking about the Chiron wound that we're all experiencing now by transit. And, and it would have been triggered by the solar eclipse on April 8th. And it is this big wound of, of being alone. And, and he talks about how COVID amplified this. And so many of us were forced to isolate and be alone for long periods of time. And for some of us, it was a lot harder than for others. Like for me, it, it was just like an average Tuesday, to be honest, because I spend so much time alone anyway. And I work in a situation where I'm alone unless I'm directly talking to a client or a student. You know, like right now, you're here, but you're on the computer and I'm alone in this room and I'm talking to a computer. So there is that aloneness energy, right? So this is just how my my life path is. But he talked about this um, amplification, I guess, of the loneliness wound with Chiron and Aries. And I listened to him talk and and I finally admitted to myself that, you know what? I've been reconciling for about the past year of my life with making peace with the fact that I'm alone and I'm meant to, I guess, be alone in this life predominantly. And it doesn't mean I don't have people around me or good relationships around me, but every important thing that I have to do, I tend to have to do solo. There's no help. I don't get help from people. I don't, part of it's my own fault, but I don't have uh, partnerships to help carry the weight. Okay. The weight in life is mine to carry. That's how I basically feel. And so one, one example of how this kind of triggered this feeling of actually feeling alone is that my daughter is about to get married. Okay. And this is amazing. This is such an amazing time for her. And yet I never envisioned my daughter or any, any of my children getting married and me attending their wedding alone and celebrating this milestone alone without their other parents, much less being the one to walk my daughter down the aisle and give her away, which I'm going to do with amazing pride and excitement and honor. But I never thought I would be going through this life experience alone. And yet here I am in that situation where I am going through it alone. And there's no one, I mean, there's plenty of my family that will be at, at the wedding, but I don't have a significant other coming to the wedding to celebrate it. I won't have that person in the pictures. It's going to be me and my family. And so it's that feeling of aloneness that that's being highlighted right now in my life and in my reality. And more so this feeling of me making peace with the fact that in the almost 50 years of my life, the great majority of my life has been alone where I am. It's just me, myself, and I. And I remember being a little girl and do you guys remember the Care Bears? It was like this cute little um, cartoon in the in the 1980s, and I loved the Care Bears when I was a little girl. And they had this one song called "I Feel So Alone," and I remember I would sing this song to myself as a little girl all the time because it was how I felt all the time. I feel so alone. If I don't know if there's a way to even Google it because it's such an old little song. It's like a two-minute song. So cute. Little Care Bears, cuddly Care Bears singing the song, I Feel So Alone. And it's like a sad song. I think it's called the sad song, actually. But the lyrics are, I feel so alone. And that was a big uh, a big energy that i that i grew up feeling i remember even when i was surrounded by my family i just felt alone i remember this one time when i was at my nona's house 
And my cousins lived upstairs. My Nona and my aunts and uncles lived on the first floor. And my sister ran upstairs to go play with my cousin. And I was sitting on the steps in between the, the first floor and the second floor. And I was sitting there all alone. And I remembered just sitting there. And nobody noticed I wasn't part of anything. Nobody noticed where I was. And I just sat there and I wasn't included in anything. And I just remember remembered feeling that aloneness and that I just was alone. And that feeling has been very pervasive in my life where over time I've learned to embrace it and to enjoy the fact that maybe I'm alone, but I do a lot of amazing things in my own company. And I have a really big spiritual, is it barometer? Is that the right word? That uh, that other people don't have because they can't be alone. They can't be by themselves. They don't know how to sit with themselves for long periods of time, whereas I do. But there's a fine line between being alone and, you know, really being alone in an unhealthy way. Like when somebody's in solitary confinement for long periods of time, it can absolutely drive you crazy. But there's healthy alone time and then there's an extreme where it's unhealthy. And I think this Chiron return energy that I'm in right now is forcing me to be alone. I am finding it impossible right now. Uh, Even if I wanted to be in a relationship, it is not a time of relationship for me. Not at all. South Node is in my seventh house. I, um, I, I don't have that supportive energy right now for relationship. And I, I'm even finding it hard to even connect with my friends where everybody's always rescheduling. We, there's just so much going on for everybody. It is very hard right now for me to connect with people. And I think this is intentional from the universe because it's highlighting this lesson right now of the wound of aloneness when you have Chiron and Aries and how you have to really learn how to function and live a healthy, full, wonderful, joyful life, even if you are alone and you feel alone in this world. So that is very much being triggered for me right now. And yet there are all blessings going on in my life around me with myself and with and in the lives of my loved ones. So it's not a depressing loneliness. That's not what this is. It is just a highlight of, okay, you're in this life, but Maria, you're alone. You are the lone wolf. So it is that lone wolf energy. And in business, I've noticed this. This is a big part of my life in business. I don't like having business partners. I don't like having other people to answer to in business in any way. I'm a lone wolf in business. I am much better off when I am not part of a team because I'm not really a team player. I'm Aries type. I want to do things my way according to my agenda. I don't want to have to take other people's needs into consideration. I don't want to have to take a group's goals into consideration. I want to take my goals, my ambitions, my desires into consideration. This is the Aries way. I have Aries rising and Chiron is on top of it. And so Chiron is saying, all right, Maria, if that's how you want to be in this life, well, you're going to be alone. And And I think it's all interconnected, okay? So the reason why I'm alone is because I am creating this energy of I don't want to compromise with someone else. I don't want to give in to another person's needs, desires, considerations. So the price that you have to pay for that, if you're unwilling to concede to another person in any way, the price you're going to pay is that you're going to live life alone. And my Chiron return right now is just amplifying that. The, okay, you reap what you sow. Maria, you have chosen that life path over the years of your life. And so this is why you are alone in this life now. And this is why you may have this life path of chronic aloneness. And so uh, it's just interesting. I wanted to come on and talk about it to see if any of you with Chiron and Aries 
are experiencing this, especially if you are having the Chiron return or if transiting Chiron is exactly conjunct one of your natal personal planets right now, Sun, Moon, Venus, Mercury, Mars, it would be triggering or an angle in your chart. It would be stimulating what I'm talking about thematically. So I know Brianna is heavily relating to this. Uh, and you're saying some very, very kind things. Uh, and so Debbie thinks that it's her too. You have to look at your chart <laughs> to know for sure. And so I don't want you to think that just because you have Chiron and Aries, you'll never have a relationship. I know I will have another relationship. Everything happens in cycles. And I think the second part of this, when I think I'm being forced to be alone right now during the Chiron return to amplify all of this, to have me really sit with this, to have me, maybe to have me get sick of being alone. It might be to get me to the point where I'm really tired of being alone. And in about a year, when Chiron then gets to my ascendant by transit and then opposes my Uranus on the seventh house cusp, at that time in my life, there's going to be a lot of different changes that support relationship. Like my progressed moon will be conjunct my descendant. And I will be going into some amazing transits to my natal Venus. I'll have Pluto sextile Venus. I will have Neptune in Aries conjunct my Venus. I will have Saturn conjunct my Venus. I will have Uranus sextile my Venus. I will have my progressed Venus making a trine to my natal Pluto and a sextile to itself. So many energies are coming up for me. Opening up next year through 2027 into 2028, those years become very supportive for relationship. And I can't help but wonder if the Chiron return now and this chronic feeling of aloneness and lone wolfness is trying to teach me about the extreme energy that I have been living in and that it doesn't have to be this extreme and that there may be a sudden opportunity to try to find some balance again in my life. And it will be interesting. I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing how those cycles end up for me because I haven't had cycles that supportive for me in relationship since I met my ex-husband and got married. Those cycles the, it's it. They're so rare to have that many cycles that are supportive at once. And when you have a condition of Venus, like I do, that's so difficult in the birth chart, you need a lot of extreme support to get you into a relationship or to sustain a relationship. And that has only happened to me when I got, when I met my ex-husband and got engaged and got married back in the mid nineties hasn't happened again. I've had relationships, dating, but nothing commitment, nothing really has stuck. And these cycles coming up starting next year for me that are opening up for the next few years are pretty much the only other time in my life that I will have that much support to the area of love and relationship. And I don't think it's an accident that it's happening after the Chiron return that it's going to be happening while transiting Chiron is conjunct my ascendant, opposing Uranus on my descendant, saying, all right, now we're going to stimulate that wound of relationship and of can you be your authentic self in a relationship, Maria? Can you do it the right way now? Or are you going to repeat the same mistake where you shoved away who you really were for the sake of that relationship and then it just blew up in your face? And I really do think that I have a soul path test coming up in the next few years connected to that. But right now, what Michael Luton said is right on. The wound of loneliness and of being alone is so dominant in my life. Um, I, and, and I'm so fortunate because I'm really, I have good people in my life, but again, everything that I do in my life, it's me. I, I'm, the buck stops here. Like I'm the one that I have to answer to. There's no help with the bills. It's just me. Somebody else has a partner maybe to help with the bills. There is, you know, nobody, if, if I didn't, create my own opportunities to make money, I would not make money. It's all me. I don't work for anybody else. There is no 
Nobody makes anything happen. I get up out of bed every day and everything that happens in my life is a direct result of what I do, of what I create. And this is so Aries. And yet every day I'm alone. I'm, I spend a lot of time alone, a lot. Most of my day is alone. In fact, on an average day, the only time I'm not alone is in the mornings when I have coffee with my son. And then I'll, if I go to the gym, I'll see people when I go to the gym or if I'm running errands. Other than that, I'm alone. It's me, myself, and I and my dogs in my house. Um, I'll see my daughter once or twice a week. I will see my family when you know I have time to see my family. Today, after work, I am going alone to my favorite park. It's like going to be 77 degrees here today. It's going to be a beautiful day in New York. And so I want to be out. I, I, I want that tourist groundedness. I want to be out in nature. So I'm taking a ride to Comset Park, which is a beautiful park in Lloyd Harbor on Long Island that I love. And I'm going to take a very long, solitary walk, walk in, in the park today. That's a normal thing for me to do. And then maybe I'll go get a massage alone. And then after that, I'll go out to eat somewhere by myself. I will have a day by myself. It is not a loneliness thing, but it is alone. It is a wound of you have to be alone. You're supposed to do things alone all the time. That's the feeling. And that's how it has felt over, over my life. So uh, Dreamcatcher says, I have Chiron and Aries, 20 degrees, 19 minutes. I have to do everything by myself, even though I am part of a family. That's exactly what I mean. It is this aloneness. I am, I, 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 I don't know how I'm being repetitive because I don't know how else to explain it, but you're understanding it, Dreamcatcher, because you're living it as well. Brianna is clearly living it as well. Uh, what house is your, is your Chiron and Aries in, Dreamcatcher? That's what Brianna wants to know. That's what I want to know. And so thank you guys for uh, seventh house partnership. Okay. Is it on the angle? Is it, is it close to the actual descendant? That makes it even more significant if it is. So I'm just curious. Um, so that's my little live stream for today. And I wanted to say hi and check in and talk to you about the loneliness, lone wolf wound. That's what I'm calling it. That's the, I think Michael Luton calls it the loneliness wound. And I think I prefer to call it the lone wolf wound because again, I don't feel sad lonely. I just feel this dominant awareness that I am alone in life and it is my life path. It is the larger life path that I'm meant to have in this lifetime. And even if I am in another relationship, this is not going to go away. Just because I have those supportive relationship indicators doesn't mean I won't have that lone wolf energy because I'm still going to need to be alone a lot. And it is the only way a relationship could succeed for me. And I am also going to be accused of being selfish in relationships because that's the Aries energy is, is I am, I am more concerned about my life path and my life purpose and making sure that I die knowing that I've contributed something of value and of worth in the world of astrology and spirituality than I am about anything else in my life other than the health and happiness of my family. Those are my energies. So, so another person to come into my life, it's going to be tricky because I'm not going to be that woman who gives up her life and her desires and her world for that. I would rather stay alone and, and be happy and be fulfilled. So it's interesting with this Chiron and Aries coming out now. Brianna is saying, oh, Debbie's saying, have a great lo lone wolf day. Thank you. I will. And Brianna's saying, I have no family support, including my mom and always been on my own in life from birth, although living with my family. I think my parents expected a boy and they had me, Aries being a masculine sign. That could be. Uh, that definitely could be. I, you know, I, I can't say because I'm not in your family dynamic, Brianna, but the energy that you're talking about on, of feeling alone, even though you're surrounded by family and people. That's, that's so Chiron and Aries. It just is. All right. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. I, um, I started filming your May videos and I want to see if I have time to upload half of them before my clients. And 
let me see. Was there anything else I had to say? Um, if I if I didn't mention, I think I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning of the live stream. But for those of you who are interested in becoming a student of mine, registration is open right now for my next beginners class. And this is a class I only teach twice a year, so it won't be offered again until 2025. And if you become a student of mine, you are embraced in my astrology family. You become part of my tribe. And I really nurture you as a student. All of my classes are personalized using your birth charts in the lesson plans and the homework assignments. The early bird registration rate, which is available right now, will save you $50 off of tuition. So if you're interested in learning astrology properly, the proper foundations, planets, signs, houses, elements, and modes, basic structure of a birth chart, how to live astrology, how to think astrologically for yourself, this is the class to take, even if you've studied astrology before, because this class fills in all of your learning gaps and helps you become a more competent astrology student. So go and claim your spot. I am going to close this class down once I reach about 35 students because I am teaching two classes at a time and I know my limits of how many students I can handle because I give you personal attention and I don't have teacher's assistance. It is all me. So if you are thinking about taking this class, register before it fills up. It will not be offered again until 2025. All right, guys, thank you for spending time with me. Japan, Japanisa is saying so good to say it in this way. Thank you. I'm glad that you relate to this conversation of Chiron and Aries and it being the lone wolf wound. All right. Have a wonderful day. I know I will. And I'm sending all of you a lot of love. Bye.